Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk about my most anticipated new book releases that are all due to come out in July, August, and September 2024. This is always a really exciting quarter to look forward to because it contains the month of September, which is when big book season really starts to heat up. But that's not to say that the two summer months within this quarter don't have some great ones in store for us as well. I have a bunch that I want to talk to you about, so let's dive right in. So beginning with the month of July, the first new release Tuesday in the quarter is going to be July 2nd. And appropriately, there are two books coming out on that day that I wanted to share with you. The first one is going to be a collection of comics, but I imagine they may also market it as a graphic novel or a graphic memoir. It's going to be called Woe, A House Cat Story of Despair by Lucy Nisley. If you have followed cartoonist Lucy Nisley on social media over the years, then you may know about her cat, Linny. Linny was a very loved but also highly dramatic cat. And before her passing, and then just leading up to her passing, Lucy would regularly post comics about life with the diva cat on her social media. I always loved reading those. I grew very fond of Linny. So revisiting those in this collection is going to be a treat. Although I imagine it's going to tug on the heartstrings because... I have an old cat myself now. The other July 2nd release I'm anticipating is not likely to make me cry, thankfully. It's called The Villain Edits by Lori DeVore. In this book, we follow a romance novelist who has had a career decline in recent years. She wants to get herself talked about again. She wants to get more eyes on her. So she signs up for a bachelor-type dating show. She does find a connection on the show, but not in the place she expects. And she also wasn't expecting that she would get the dreaded villain edit, meaning that the editors make her look like the villain on the show, which definitely throws a wrench into her career comeback plan. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, because I'm not ashamed of it. I love reality TV. This just sounds like a blast. Moving on to the next new release Tuesday in July, which is the 9th, there is one novel that I wanted to bring to your attention called The Art of Pretend by Lauren Cool. This is another contemporary novel. The main character of this one has a very long long-standing yet complex relationship with a friend from a wealthy artist family, but then that wealthy friend moves abroad without warning. And around the same time, that friend's older brother, who our main character has always had a thing for, he comes into town. And while the friend is away, our main character and this older brother begin a very intense, forbidden summer romance. The way this one sounded reminded me so much of Sirens and Muses by Antonia Angris, which just so happened to be my favorite novel of 2022. But then I also got the feeling that it might be kind of similar to Bittersweet by Miranda Beverly Whittemore, which has always struck me as a novel that is vaguely reminiscent of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So all of those things combined make this one feel like it's going to be exactly my kind of book. On July 16th, there are two more books that caught my eye that are going to be released. The first is called The Striker and the Clock, On Being in the Game by Georgia Klopfel. And this is a work of sports writing, but not in the traditional, a champion is telling you how they became a champion kind of way. Rather, this book is all about loving, but then losing the game of soccer. This author was a professional player for many years in this book, which is composed of 90 short passages. She talks about how much she loves the game, shaping her craft, playing professionally in multiple different countries, but then dealing with injuries and eventually having to grapple with the grief of having to let the game go. I would have been interested in reading this anyway, but since women's sports have been really pushed into the mainstream in such a significant way lately, I am more interested in reading this than ever. The second July 16th release is also nonfiction. It's called Meet the Neighbors, Animal Minds and Life in a More Than Human Worlds by Brandon Keim. This book considers the lives of different animals, their day-to-day -day lives, what it must be like to be them, considering their physical and intellectual capabilities. An Immense World by Ed Yong, which is all about animal senses. That was my favorite nonfiction book of last year. So when I saw this one, I was interested just in of itself. I want to see what it's like, but also admittedly, I kind of want to see how it compares to An Immense World. I have two more July releases on my list. The next one comes out on the 23rd, and this one sounds exceptionally unique. 
It's called The Modern Fairies by Claire Pollard. And it's this sumptuous tale of a group of intellectual women in 17th century Paris who regularly gather together to share fairy tales that they've written. And they write these fairy tales to express their hidden desires and frustrations with their lives. I saw an early reviewer of this one compare this book to the feeling that Sofia Coppola's movie Marie Antoinette gave them. I'm also getting some vibes of Heather O'Neill's work through this description. Like every Everything is pointing me in this book's direction. This is on my must read list for this summer. The final July book on this anticipated releases list is another work of historical fiction called They Dream in Gold by Mai Sinar. This one begins in 1968. We see a couple meet at a jazz bar. They fall deeply in love. They are very connected to one another. But then the man, who's a musician, goes out on a tour with his band. It's supposed to be a very short tour. But months later, the entire crew hasn't returned home yet. So his lady goes out in search of answers to seek the truth of what happened to him. I'm a huge fan of jazz music. So any book that even hints that there might be a jazzy element, I will at least give a try. Moving into the month of August, there are two books coming out on the 6th that interested me. One of those is called All That Glitters, a story of friendship, fraud, and fine arts by Orlando Whitfield. This is a memoir and a self-described Icarus story in which the art dealer author talks about his long-standing but ultimately deceptive friendship with a fellow art dealer who was eventually unmasked as being a massive fraud. The art world in general already really interests me, as do stories about fraudsters. So this one is definitely speaking my language. Also coming out on August 6th is The Bookshop, a history of the American bookstore by Evan Friss. And this is exactly what it sounds like, an endearing history of the bookstore here in the United States of America. I don't know about you, but books about books never fail to delight me. August 13th seems like it might be the biggest new release date of August. I have four books on my most anticipated releases list that are all due to come out on that day. Two novels, two works of nonfiction. We'll start by talking about the novels. First, there's The Snap by Elizabeth Staple, which seems really interesting. Our main character works as a media relations director for an NFL team, and she's a part of this secret support group that's full of other high-ranking women who work in sports. They use this support group to help each other through the nonsense that they often have to deal with from the men that they work with. But then the head coach of the NFL team that our main character works for is found dead, and he's surrounded by notes that demand that that support group be exposed. I have no idea what to expect from this one, but I'm interested in giving it a try. The second August 13th novel on my list is by an author I've read previously, Christopher Jansma. He is the author of an excellent and mind-bending novel called The Unchangeable Spots of Leopards. I still think about that book all the time. Well, he has a new novel coming out. It's called Our Narrow Hiding Places. And in this novel, an 80-year-old woman is recollecting how her Dutch family survived the final years of Nazi occupation. Now, based on that premise alone, I probably wouldn't have picked this book up. I'm not a big World War II era reader the way that I know a lot of other people are. It's not the premise that got me. It's definitely the author. Because I love this author so much, I want to give this a read. Then on to the nonfiction, I have another book from an author I already know and love. It's a book called Bite, an incisive history of teeth from hagfish to humans by Bill Shutt. This is a book, of course, all about teeth across all different species. Bill Shutt wrote another book not dissimilar to this one on the heart. So we talked about the human hearts, but also the hearts in other creatures. And then he wrote an incredible book on the natural history of cannibalism, which if you've not been around my channel for a long time, you may not know that I reviewed that one while having a few glasses of wine because why not? It was a lot of fun to make because his books are really fun. I don't know how you make a book about cannibalism fun, but he managed to do it. So I imagine this book about teeth will be really fun. They're very funny. They're very informative. I love his books. The last August 13th release that I'll talk about is another science book called Gray Matters, a biography of brain surgery by Theodore H. Schwartz. And in this book, the author takes us inside the neuroscience field to give us a better understanding of it as a whole. And he he also gives us details about specific cases to illustrate some of his points. 
Maybe it's just because I grew up watching Grey's Anatomy, but books about surgery always get added to my TBR. But that's actually all for the month of August. It seems like August is going to be the quietest month of this particular quarter because September gets started with a bang. The first new release Tuesday in September is the Tuesday after Memorial Day here in the USA. It's September 3rd, and there are so many books coming out on that day. It is going to be a doozy. I have four on my list that I want to show you. Once again, two novels, two nonfiction books, but this time we'll start with the nonfiction. The first one is by another familiar to me author, Josh Knoll. He wrote a great book called Barrel Age Stout and Selling Out, all about the sale of Goose Island to Anheuser Busch and how macrobreweries were responding to the rise of microbreweries. I read that book with a friend of mine, also named Josh, a few years back, and we talked about it here on this channel. But now Josh Knoll is back with a new book about a different kind of alcohol, Malort, the Redemption of a revered and reviled spirit. And this book is all about how a very bitter Chicago-based liqueur has managed to survive for over a century. I've never tried it myself, but I might want to after reading this. The second September 3rd nonfiction book on my list is called Infinite Life, the revolutionary story of eggs, evolution, and life on Earth by Jules Howard. This book is more broadly about the history of reproduction, but then the author zooms in on the natural miracles that we call eggs, which are the origin of 90% of life on Earth. I have not yet had the good fortune of reading this author's work, this science writer's work yet, so I'm excited to see what I think of it. Then on to the September 3rd novels. The Cottage Around the Corner by D.L. Soria seems like the perfect cozy, witchy romance for the fall. It stars the owner of a struggling spell shop and the entrepreneur behind a competing store who have to put aside their differences to work together to fight against supernatural forces that are threatening their town. This is exactly the kind of book I want to be reading as autumn peeks its head around the corner. And the same goes for another cozy sounding book coming out on the exact same day called Will Prescribe You a Cat by Sayu Ishida. This one was, of course, first published in Japanese. It just recently got an English language translation. This is all about this clinic that will prescribe you a cat if you come in with a mystery ailment. If you're a fellow cat lover, I am definitely one, then you know that sometimes a cat does make the perfect medicine. September 17th seems like it's going to be the day for celebrity memoir releases because there are two that I'm really excited about that both come out on the 17th. The first one is one that I cannot wait to read. It's called The Third Gilmore Girl by Kelly Bishop, in which I'm sure she's going to discuss her absolutely iconic career from being in the original run of A Chorus Line on Broadway to playing the mother in Dirty Dancing, then to, of course, playing the uncompromising Emily Gilmore on my beloved show and many other people's beloved show, Gilmore Girls. Everything I've ever seen or heard about Kelly Bishop seems to imply that she's the opposite of Emily Gilmore. She's just walking sunshine Everybody loves her. She is so talented. I'm really hoping this one gets an audiobook release because I would love to hear her tell her own story. And the same goes for the next one because wow, does she have an impressive voice, but it's called Over the Influence by Joanna Jojo Levesque. This is by a pop star who dominated airwaves back when she was incredibly young. She signed a record deal when she was only 12 years old and then proceeded to dominate the airwaves in the late 2000s. She put out hits like Too Little Too Late. I was listening to those songs back in the late 2000s. I loved her music. But then one day it really did seem like she just disappeared. So in this book, she talks about that, what happened and what all was going on behind the scenes. Then to close out this quarter, I wanted to tell you about two very different books that are both due to be released on the final new release Tuesday of September the 24th. One on One by Jamie Harrow is an enemies to lovers workplace rom-com, but make it sports. The two main characters of this book both work for a college basketball team. They have a history with one another that's not so great, but the chemistry they have with one another is pretty great, and it continues to develop as their team has this unexpected Cinderella story in the March Madness tournament. I love romances. I can't get enough of basketball. 
Sign me up for this one. And then finally, just in time for the start of the spooky season, a new novella called Graveyard Shift by M.L. Rio will be released. This book stars five people who all work the night shift and who regularly meet up with one another in an ancient graveyard until they realize that someone's been digging up the graves, and we follow them as they attempt to solve the mystery of who that someone is. If you don't recognize this author's name, M.L. Rio wrote an extremely popular book called If We Were Villains that was definitely reminiscent of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. That's why I included it in a Secret History Read-Alikes video I made quite some time ago. I actually liked If We Were Villains more than I liked The Secret History said what I said. But that makes me all the more excited to read this new one because this is the first book that ML Rio has put out since she released If We Were Villains. But there you have it. Those are all the books due to come out in the third quarter of 2024 that I am most hyped about. I would love to hear from you if you're curious about any of these books or if there are any new releases due to come out in that same window of time that you're really excited about that I didn't mention in this video. Let me know any or all of that down in the comment section below in the description box. Box, I have listed and linked all the books that I talked about today. They are there for your click and convenience. I've also included links to any videos that I mentioned throughout this video. And additionally, I've put links down there to the previous two videos I've made for 2024, the anticipated releases for quarter one and quarter two, just in case you missed those videos. Or if you want to go back now and revisit them now that most, if not all of those books I talked about should be out in the world ready to be read. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.